Hi, this is Charles Herring, President of Herring Consulting. I'm often asked why do people create computer viruses. I'm normally asked this by a frustrated computer user who's staring at his broken computer. Well, like many nefarious activities, malicious software is crafted with different motivations. I thought it might be helpful to put this together to help you understand why someone went out of their way to do something so seemingly meaningless and destructive. Understanding their motivations may better propel, uh, protect you from their wiles. For the sake of this brief, I'll use the word malware to describe all software that has a negative or unintended impact on users. Malware is just short for malicious software, and it's a broad category that includes viruses, Trojan horses, spyware, email worms, and others. Uh, this brief is intended uh, to explain the motivations of folks who might create malware and is intended for an audience of normal non-computer folks. I put the multitude of motivations into three broad categories. The first is mischievous pleasure, the second socio-political, and the third financial gain. Mischievous pleasure is something we're all familiar with on some degree. It's sneaking out of the house without permission to see if we can get away with it, or playing a prank on a friend. It's something we do that serves no helpful purpose outside of seeing if we can get away with it and seeing another flounder because of our own cunning. Folks that are driven by this type of motivation often do it for the challenge to just to see if they could do it. I remember in ninth grade computer lab, my best friend asked me, Charles, what do you think they'll do to me if I squirt this mustard packet into the floppy drive? I responded, well, they'll probably suspend you. And he said, well, let's find out. Sure enough, he got suspended. And when the principal was discussing the situation with his father, the principal accused my friend of being a hacker. Well, while his actions didn't live up to the title, his motivation might have. Perhaps the most famous hacker in the world, Kevin Mitnick, said in a recent interview with CNET, I wasn't interested in selling the source code or doing anything with it. It was more about the challenge of getting it. I had to breach like four layers of security to get in. Well, I, I've personally had the opportunity to participate in international hacking competitions, and I can tell you it's thrilling to try to wrap your mind around complex puzzles and break through them. It's more of a powerful motivation than we might want to admit. The next motivation that could drive someone to act criminally with a computer is social or political activism. Terms like hacktivist or cyber terrorist have been used to describe individuals who attack websites or organization users to further a movement or political agenda. In 2008, Chinese hackers um, performed a type of attack against the web servers at CNN because of a perception of unfair reporting about the Olympic torch. A group calling themselves anonymous uh, has waged cyber warfare on Scientology, recently vowing to get them off the internet because of the damage they were doing to their followers. Now both mischievous pleasure and socio-political hacktivism sounds like great motivators, but it shouldn't surprise you that the most uh, of the viruses created come into existence over money. Financial gain has been motivating and justifying evil actions by mankind ever since the beginning of time. It shouldn't surprise us that it's also the primary motivator for getting a piece of malware onto your computer. The primary reason people want to put a virus on your computer uh, is to recruit it. By getting the malware onto your computer, they can, use, uh, they can issue commands to your PC so that it does the dirty work for them. When criminals get dozens or even hundreds of computers working for them in this way, they've created what's called a zombie network. This way, if authorities try to trace the nefarious activity, they end up on your computer and not the criminals. But why go through so much trouble? One reason is sending solicited email, um, excuse me, unsolicited email, also known as spam. Spam is big money. Apparently, spam must work because criminals are sending it at record quantities. Since email providers will stop trusting sources that send spam and consequently block them, criminals need fresh locations for sending it. That's why they want your computer's untarnished internet reputation at work for them. Another reason is an activity known as click fraud. You can't go far on the internet without seeing advertisement pasted on websites. In a normal legal situation, the advertiser pays money to the website owner when his advertisement is clicked uh, from a new location. Criminals participating in click fraud use your computer to click these ads without your knowledge. This obligates the advertiser to pay the web host who is somehow on cahoots with the one that uh, created the malware. Another threat is identity theft. 
Uh, this threat has really made it in the mainstream. Uh, most have heard about it, but essentially, um, the criminal wants to steal enough information about you so that they can take out a loan in your name and run away, <laughs> leaving you with a mess. Another nefarious activity, like identity theft, is known as uh, being a money mule or money laundering. They basically want to use your bank accounts or even you personally to move money internationally to cover the illegal way in which the money was obtained, maybe drug or weapons or even slave trafficking. Well, also, occasionally it's good business to cripple your, competi uh, your competition. So unscrupulous co uh, competitors may use your computer along with others to send millions of requests to a competitor's website to make it too busy to respond uh, to the valid request from potential or current customers. The hope is that the dissatisfied customers will move their service to the uh, criminal uh, competitor. A final reason, and one that's been uh, pretty big uh, throughout history, is um, the ability to steal information. Perhaps a competing donut shop wants the secret recipe from its competitor, or perhaps there is information that a company holds that could be used to extort money from the company. Anyway, information can be extremely valuable, and a well-written piece of evil code just might get a criminal in the door. Well, that wraps up this session. Well, I know this is far from exhaustive, I hope that it helps give you some insight into the criminal mind of those who are out to use your computer for harm. Thanks for lending me your ear. This is Charles Herring with Herring Consulting.